Hello to all of our amazing Burton students and families. We know this is a very untraditional way to welcome all of you back to our new school year, but we are still very, very excited to get going. So tonight we have our virtual orientation. This is going to be our English version of orientation. So Mr. Haga is gonna be taking the lead and we will also have a video in Spanish for any of you who may want or need it. So Mr. Haga, take it away. Good evening, families and students. We're so excited to start our new school year. Uh, even though it's virtual, we're excited to share with all the amazing things that we're gonna be doing for this next nine weeks. Um, but know that in our heart of hearts, we look forward to seeing you all face to face soon. So I'm gonna start sharing the screen. Bear with me. Boom. Okay, Allison, are we good? We are great. All right, so we're gonna do two different orientations this year. The first one's gonna be our distance learning orientation. We don't wanna bog you guys down with a lot of the information for what it's gonna look like if and when we do come back in October. So we're gonna to focus today on what it's gonna look like in two weeks when we start on the 25th. So first, welcome back. Um, even though we're not face to face, we are still the most amazing school in Grand Rapids and we're so thrilled to have you guys with us and uh, show you and explain all the amazing things that's gonna be going on. But before we do that, we wanna celebrate a little bit. Last year, March 13th, we were thrown into this whirlwind of distance learning. Um, but our teachers stepped up and our students stepped up and our families stepped up. There was new teacher learning that was going on. Our teachers had to be thrown into all sorts of different ways to teach with technology. Our students had to be thrown into how to only do learning through the use of our tablets, um, through Seesaw, through all those things. And you guys as parents have really stepped up and we're so proud to have you guys as part of our community uh, in terms of getting those students on, getting those students learning and growing even in these tough times. Um, and so some of these pictures are there to show you some of the work that's been done in our K-5 building. So we wanted to take a second to celebrate our teachers, our students, and you guys as well. Um, so now the next few slides are going to be kind of wordy and kind of uh, information-based, but it's important that we focus on this. So while some of you may still have devices, this year the district's going to be going one-to-one, -one, which is amazing. So for those of you that were two-to-one or maybe needed another tablet, you're going to be able to get this this year. So distribution will be taking place August 17th to October 23rd. There's going to be regional distribution sites, uh, Gerald R. Ford, City, Harrison, and then the lucky thing is right here at Burton Middle School. The dates, they're going to be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. So every day, all day. Um, in order to get that, you need to decide if you need another device and then contact this information here. So you got to contact 301-1111 uh, or email distancelearninghelpdesk at grps.org for instructions on how to determine if a grps device is the solution that you need. Um, and one thing that's really important families, I am gonna jump in here, is you have to be registered in order to get a device. So we have lots of families who are registered. We have a slide about registration coming up but you will not be able to get your additional device or devices if you're not registered for school. Yes. So distance learning and our expectations. So what's new this year compared to the spring? Um, last year, like I said at the beginning, we were in a whirlwind. So it was a lot of, here's some lessons on Seesaw and I'm gonna set up a meeting every day. And while that worked in the short term, it wouldn't be beneficial for the students in the long term. So the districts and all the teachers decided that we're gonna really build up our program here. So this year, we're gonna have live lessons. There's gonna be assessments. There's gonna be small group work. There's gonna be attendance taken, grades taken, and more feedback to help you, to help your students understand what they're learning. So if we look at this image to the left, last year in the spring of 2020 in March, we were two to one. Some students and families that had larger families only got two devices. This year, the district's committing to the students and families and communities, and we're going one-to-one. -one. So here at Burton, we're gonna have iPads K to five, which is great. Student attendance, in the spring, it was participation-based. It was encouraged, it was hopeful, but it wasn't required. This year, attendance will be taken during whole group learning periods, similar to face-to-face, -face, right? If we were in the building, we take it every morning. Same thing um, when we are at distance learning. And then finally, grading. Last year, you guys might have received a report card saying that if you participated, if you were engaged in the learning, 
this year, grading will be based on the work that's done, the participation, and there'll be actual letter grades assigned to your students. Um, so while those last two things might seem a little bit, know that on the front end of thing, the live lessons and the assessments are really gonna engage our students a little bit more. Okay, so some of you might have seen this uh, in the presentation to the community if you uh, chimed in to the board meeting or any of the work sessions, but this is kind of an overview of what our K to five day is gonna look like. So on Monday, it's gonna be a six hour day for our teachers, for the students, it's gonna be a lot of asynchronous assignments. And again, asynchronous means that it's not face to face. So asynchronous might remind you a lot of what last year looked like, where you might get a seesaw assignment, you might have to do some work on Lexia or Get Epic, um, you might have some of your specials, art, PE, music, um, but there won't be any time on Monday where you're gonna be face to face with your teacher necessarily. Then on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, we're really getting teaching going. There's gonna be synchronous time where there's gonna be two hours of whole group. Now, as a parent and as um, somebody that looked at this for the first time, I was saying I have to be in front of a computer for two hours. That's not necessarily true. Your teacher will communicate with you. There might be a half hour to 45 minutes in the morning for ELA and something a little bit later for math. Your teacher will communicate with that with you. So take this time uh, that you see here and think about how that could be split up a little bit. And then there's also that asynchronous time. And again, reminding you synchronous means with the teacher face to face. Asynchronous means that we're doing um, Lexia, Seesaw lessons, uh, social, social studies or science weekly and things like that. So you'll see on Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday, it's pretty split up like that. Then again, on Friday, we have another six hour day for our teachers. And here's where um, your students can come for that small group work. Here's where we're gonna do most of our maybe individual or small group student assessments. So that way we can really give that personalized feedback to really help inform what we need to teach the following week. And just so you know, parents, we will also be sending you via Dojo and your teachers will be reaching out to you um, with specific uh, schedules for each classroom as well, because we know that this can look very, very overwhelming, but we're hoping it will uh, be helpful once we are able to get you those more specific schedules based on classroom. Yep. And in addition to that, I want to add that um, our teachers are going to work hard to learn new technology all the time. And so we are going to be recording lessons. So we, we understand fully that if there is a, um, a live synchronous lesson going on, let's say from 930 to 1030, and you just can't make that work, that lesson will be recorded. So your student won't be missing out. The student will have to find a time to view it. Um, and that will still count as attendance and participation. But again, like Mrs. Woodside said, communication, 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 whether it's dojo, seesaw, anything, we'll get to that at the end or later in the slideshow, but we'll be in touch with you, you'll be in touch with us and everything will work out. So distance learning, here's some general guidelines. Um, when in schools, your students and teachers work together to create a class contract. Here at Burton, we create class contracts at the beginning of the year. That class contract is a set of expectations or a gold standard for how we want our class to run. And by we, I mean the students. They are part of creating that, right? It, expectations for work, for behavior, and how we treat one another. Here at Burton, distance learning is going to be no different. So let's walk through some of these expectations that we're going to have. So if we can look at the um, chart to the right. For students, you need to dedicate appropriate time to learning right? Understanding that we are in distance learning. So I know that in the morning I eat breakfast and then I have my learning time, right? Or I eat lunch and then I have my learning time. So we need to make sure that that time is a special time and it's dedicated to that, right? We need to check that our appropriate online platforms and information are updated daily and they're ready to go, right? We need to attend as much as possible. Those regular synchronous learning opportunities. And again, synchronous is that face-to-face, -face, right? Asynchronous, you can do kind of on your own time, but that synchronous time, treat that as that special time, okay? Sometimes the most important thing I know for my children at home is identify a comfortable and quiet space to learn, right? Maybe you have a favorite couch. Maybe it's in your, in your bedroom. Maybe it's at the kitchen table. Find that special place and make it special for you guys, right? Make sure that we submit all assignments that as the teacher asks and ensure our own social emotional balance by keeping healthy habits, 
right? And those half healthy habits are getting enough sleep, right? Eating the right kind of food, getting exercise, drinking plenty of water. I know we're not together in school. And so a lot of those things might be a little off, but do your best to make sure those habits are there and set a schedule for yourself like you are back in school. Okay, for parents. Yeah, you guys have some expectations too. provide an environment conducive to learning. Right. So if, if um, my son says, hey, dad, I want to work at the kitchen table today. All right. So I, as a parent, I'll clean off the kitchen table, make sure they have everything they need there. Or if I want to work on the carpet today, okay, maybe I'll vacuum the carpet or clean it off. So they see that they have a calm workspace for them. Right. Engage in conversations, conversations on posted materials. Right. Yeah. The kids are learning at home, but have those same conversations that you would if they were in school. How was your day? What'd you just learn? How can I help you? Do you need some help? Making sure you're part of the learning. Monitor time spent engaging in online and offline learning, including um, variables like that of preferred study times, right? So I know my, I'll, I'll keep going back to my son. My son will often try to trick me, be like, hey, if I do this work for five minutes, can I go on Mario Kart for 10? Well, there can be rewards set up, but we need to monitor that and make sure the work is getting done before we give those rewards. Um, encourage attendance as much as possible. There's going to be days that it's tough and kids aren't getting it and your students might be a little frustrated. Encourage that um, conversation with their teachers, right? Encourage them to show up and have those conversations. Say, hey, Miss Morton or hey, Miss Hammond, I'm struggling a bit. Can, can we slow down? You can help me. And I promise you the Burton teachers will be there to support you. And then finally, support emotional balance by providing ample room and time for reflection or physical activity, conversations, and most importantly, we have K-5 to building play, right? Our kids need to be able to play and move around. We don't want them to just sit in front of this computer for six hours. We want them to get some of that energy out so they're best suited to learn. So those are some of the general guidelines that we're going to hope for and follow as we um, go through this distance learning time for the next nine weeks. And another addition to that, um, now that John has gone through our recommendations and expectations, is also we know many of you have to work during the day or your schedule is just a little bit more complicated. And so it's also finding a schedule that works best for all of you. So if you want your students to attend the in, you know, the face-to-face -face sessions with the teachers and then wait and do uh, more individual work once you're home, that works as well. Um, it's always important just to reach out to your teacher to let them know what your situation is and what, um, what schedule you're looking at and what schedule you're working with. So of course, of course, of course, we're always here to work with you uh, during this time. Absolutely. Moving on, our next slide shows that our preferred platform for learning. So what we're gonna do most of our work on is Seesaw. Right, And so yes, there'll be those synchronous times, you're gonna get those live lessons, but everything is gonna be posted through your Seesaw class. So it'll be very important to connect to your child's classroom in Seesaw, right? This app right here on the right side of your screen that says class on it, that's what the Seesaw app looks like. Luckily, we have district iPads, and so it'll always be uploaded into your iPad. So all you gotta do is click on that, uh, there should be logins being sent home. If you don't see a login or don't know how to log in, reach out to um, this building. We'll help you, and I'll get to some of those supports later. Your teacher using Dojo, whatever it might be, we will make sure that before October 25th, you are ready to go because that's the most important thing. In addition to Seesaw, we'll also be using um, applications like Get Epic, which is an online library of books that students um, can either choose books that were signed to them by teachers, or peruse their own books uh, that they're interested in. There's options for them to be read to them or them to read on their own. Lexia Core 5, which is our foundational skills practice um, and improvement app, which most of our students all love and are, have been working really hard on. And then finally, Studies Weekly, which is some science and social studies lessons um, that will be there to supplement some of our learning as well. Do you have anything to add about any of that, Allison? I do not. Just like Mr. Haga said, uh, these apps should already be on your iPad. Mm -hmm. uh, if they're not, um, you should reach out to the teacher or reach out to us um, and we can help uh, brainstorm why they are not, but they should be preloaded on the iPads. Yeah. 
And so these apps on the bottom, the Epic, the Core 5, Lexia, and as well as the study apps, those are those apps that will, in Seesaw, that will be used during that synchronous time, right? So that time where there's the live lesson where the students will be on a video talking with their teachers, and then the teacher might say, okay, so for the next 20 minutes, why don't you go work on that skill on Lexia, or I have this assignment on Seesaw. So these are the apps that you'll use to access the, a lot of the learning that we're gonna be doing this year. Dojo, um, many of you are already part of Dojo. If you are not, we highly recommend it. It's the teacher communication tool that we're gonna use the most. So you're gonna receive a code from your teacher. Uh, please make sure that you register via your phone or your district provided technology. Um, it allows you to have direct teacher to parent communication. And one of the coolest features about it is it translates for you. So if you uh, need to type in Spanish or English and want it in Spanish, whatever that might be, it translates that for you. Um, the one, one of the most amazing things about Burton is we have probably the highest percentage of students that participate or students and families that participate in Class Dojo. So obviously we want to get that 100%. We highly, highly, highly encourage you to sign up for this. Again, it's an app on your phone or you could use the technology the district gives you, right? And it's downloading it and getting it going. Um, and it's a way to quickly send messages to your teacher that they'll get right away. All of our teachers are trained in it and are excited to begin communicating with you. And it's also a way for you guys to reach out to Mr. Haga and myself as well, because you can send messages directly to Burton Elementary. And I know many of you have reached out um, via Dojo and we've been able to um, solve issues that you're having. So again, it's you know great for teacher communication, but also your ability to communicate with us. Yes. Okay, social media, Facebook and YouTube. Please make sure to follow us on Facebook. And this year, we're gonna create a YouTube channel uh, it's titled Burton Elementary School. It will allow us to post videos like this, um, as well as other videos as the year goes on, uh, helpful tutorials on how to use Seesaw or how to use Lexia. Um, a lot of times we posted that to Facebook, but we understand not everybody has Facebook. And so we really wanna make sure that we can reach out as many parents and families as possible. So make sure that on Facebook, you search Burton Elementary GRPS, and on YouTube, you search for Burton Elementary School please like and follow both, and that way we can get as much information to you as possible. Okay, our calendar. Um, so usually we share with you a whole year's calendar, and to be completely honest with you, this year's gonna be uh, a little bit different. So we have August, September, and October here, because as of right now, we know that distance learning is going through October 21st. Um, I can tell you that we're working very hard to create virtual family nights, weekly read-alouds, um, et cetera, and things like that. So this will allow us to stay connected beyond school if we can make those nights come together. So as of right now, we don't have any of those nights set up, but we plan on doing a bunch of them as soon as we can figure out what we're allowed to do and how we're allowed to do it. So please keep an eye out for that information on your child's Seesaw, on Dojo, and on our Facebook page. The most important dates that we have are October, sorry, August 25th, which is our first day of school, our first day of virtual learning, um, you will have plenty of information about who your teacher is, start times, all that stuff prior to that date, right? So I know some of you right now might be thinking like, well, who's my teacher? Am I starting? I'm starting in two weeks. We promise you you'll have all that information before then. Do you have anything to add? Uh, just that we'll also be having our virtual open house on August 20th from 6 to 7. Yep, um, right. So we're not 100% sure on what that is going to look like, but the idea is that um, students will have either a video from the teacher or they, they'll be able to sign in and tell their teacher um, more details to come. But August 20th, we're going to have a virtual open house. Absolutely. And that'll be something that we post on Facebook. That'll be something that we'll probably record and put on YouTube so way everybody has an opportunity if they can't attend at that time. Okay, registration. We still need to register. It's one of the most important things. Like uh, Mrs. Woodside said, we can't get our technology if we don't register. You won't get any of the communication about your class if you don't register. Um, you won't get any of our um, Burton specific communication about events if we don't register. So we need to go online and register. And there's a couple ways to do that. The forms and online registration are all at family.grps.org, right? Or I would start with that one, but if you don't know your login, you don't know how to 
uh, really do that, call the office or call our family support team, which I'll show you in a second. And we will more than happily and be willing to walk you through the process. Um, the district has really streamlined it, so it's much quicker this year. Um, there are some forms we'll have to collect, but we can work with you on a time and way to do that safely. Um, but please, 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 if you take one thing away from this, let's get online and register so we can get as much information to you as soon as possible. Because um, as our classes fill up, we need to make sure that we have the right placement for every student and we need to be registered to do that. Okay, our family support team. I've referenced this a few years and this is something that um, Ms. Woodside and myself created last year, which was um, a blessing and amazing. So last year when we were thrown into this um, distance learning, we were getting a lot of phone calls and there were a lot of different people that were taking these and the communication line wasn't there. So we created a family support team and we created these three columns. Um, there was issues with logging in, participation, technology. There were the needs for technology or internet access, and then there were the basic needs. And so in order to streamline that, we created this family support team. So I'm gonna give you a second to look at this and I'll kind of explain it. So for the issues with login and participation, that was one of our biggest uh, needs and biggest talking points with our families. And so uh, myself, Ms. Woodside, um, Ms. Monhe, Ms. Hulk, uh, Ms. Gutierrez, Ms. Berkmeyer, Mr. Vilchez, uh, Mr. Nelson, Ms. Martinez. Um, there's a whole group of people that speak both English and Spanish that are here to support you if you need help logging in, right? If you wake up one morning and Google Meets isn't working, if you wake up one morning and you can't, all of a sudden Seesaw is gone, you need to figure it out, give us a call. There's the parent line for the district. There's the parent, there's the dis, uh, the Burton staff number. Uh, there's Seesaw, there's Dojo. There's all sorts of ways to communicate with us. We'd love to be here to help you. Then there's a group of parents or community members that needed technology, right? The first thing to do there is to contact GRPS, right? On the previous slide, there was the email and phone number they're going to be the ones that are able to give you that technology and internet access. Um, if you're not finding that you get a hold of them, school's your first point of contact as well. We are here and we are willing to help you or help facilitate that. Um, and that's uh, Principal Woodside, myself, um, and our secretaries will, will more than help you with that. And finally, the basic needs. We're fortunate here at Burton to be a KSSN partner um, and they have their offices in our building. Um, currently, uh, Mrs. Vicario is um, out on maternity leave. Congratulations, but we're very fortunate to have Angela Perez um, as her replacement for the time being. And as you can see right there, it's just Angela Perez at Kent, S, Kent KSSN, I'm guessing, .org. Um, and she will be there to help you. We also have our Arbor Circle um, clinicians as well as our DHS workers. So just because we're distance learning does not mean that you, we don't still have the same supports that we had all the time here at Burden. So anything you guys need, whether it's logging in, you need some internet access or another iPad, or you need help paying bills, or there's other basic needs that you really need address, contact the school. We have somebody here to help you. So one of the most important parts about this distance learning is the idea of parent empowerment, right? You guys are the front lines. You guys need to make sure that your students are learning and growing and thriving, and we wanna be here to support you in that mission. So in order to do that, we want you to know that we're the first point of contact. As you saw on that last slide, we have a whole team of people set up to support you guys and any needs that you may have. But the district also has those supports too. There's tech supports that are at the district level for those online platforms like Seesaw and Google Classroom. Um, if you have a high school student, Schoology as well, and that's 301-1111 or distance learning help desk at grps.org, right? There is different parent support groups and learnings around student engagement, how to get your, your students engaged in their learning. Um, and that's parents.grps.org. We have a fantastic parent university to help give you some um, ideas of how to keep your student engaged, as well as some learning around social emotional learning for your students at home, right? That's one of the things that are often left behind. We do a lot of work with that here in school, but sometimes it needs to be done at home too. So if you need some resources for that, 
go to that parents.grps.org, um, at least check it out. It's a great website. Uh, finally, if you need help with translation or interpretation, our EL office is still open. Uh, I explained our KSSN and family support services is, are open. Um, and then if you have any questions regarding 504 plans or IEPs, I highly suggest you first reach out to um, Ms. Lore, Ms. Grassman, or Ms. Little. But if you need to call the district office after that, it's 819-2185. But again, I wanna emphasize that very first point at the top, your school's your first point of contact, right? If you call those numbers, they're gonna probably ask you, have you talked to your school first? Um, so make sure that you give us a call and then if it's something we can't do, we can direct you or you can go ahead to one of those uh, points of contact as well. And just in terms of uh, reaching out to the school, what I will say, is just um, if we can have a little bit of patience, maybe give us you know 24 uh, to 48 hours maximum to get back to you, um, just because we do, Burton is a very large school, so we have a lot of students and a lot of families, which we love. It just makes us um, sometimes a little bit slower to keep up with uh, all of the communication that we're receiving. So again, a little bit of grace, uh, I would say anywhere from zero hours to 48 hours, we will get back to you as soon as we can. Um, again, which is why uh, Dojo is so important because we tend to be able to respond a lot faster that way. Yeah, um, going off what Allison said, I would highly recommend, even if you call and leave a message, I would also leave a message for your teacher on Dojo or Ms. Woodside and myself. That way there's multiple points of that people that can see. Because a lot of times if we get here in the morning and there's 30 messages, that takes a while to get through, right? But if there's a message right on our, e our Dojo or something, we can quickly help you out depending on what the problem is. So yes, please use all of our forms of communication as much as you need. Okay, meal distribution sites. So all GRPS students are eligible for meals. Parents and students may pick up. Meal distribution will begin August 24th, so that's the day before school starts. Students will have the opportunity to receive a breakfast and a lunch for each school day. The days of distribution are Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. As you can see, there's a lot of locations. The great thing about it is we here at Burton are one of those locations. So if you're right down the street, come on a Monday, Wednesday, or Friday, and you'll be able to pick up meals for the week, which I think is amazing. And that's from 12 to 1.30, right? So it's about an hour and a half time frame that you'll be able to come and safely pick up um, some meals using social distancing, okay? Finally, even though we are um, doing distance learning, we want to emphasize that we are still Burton, right? Here at Burton, we're gonna be responsible, use integrity, respect everyone. We're gonna try our best, own our actions, and most importantly, never give up, right? That motto we use is distance learning in person. You know, one of the, the gr greatest things I heard uh, from Dr. Gorman was whether we're distance learning or in person, we're teaching and we're learning. And that's our motto here at Burton is we're gonna do our best to make sure that um, the learning is rich and engaging and inspiring for our students. Um, and we're gonna expect the same from you guys. So last but not least, contact information. So who do I call? So if you need district information, the main phone number is 819-2000 for any general questions you may have. The distance learning hotline, I know I've said it like nine times, I'm gonna say it again, is 301-1111 for tech support and related uh, information there. I will say, again, call our family support team first. The distance learning hotline is for the entire district. So as you can imagine, if we get bogged down just in our building, they're probably gonna be bogged down a little bit too. Always check the website, grps.org, for um, more news and information, especially as we come closer to October 21. Uh, if you need distance learning support, it's distance learning help desk at grps.org. There will be quarterly listening sessions with our new and amazing superintendent, Dr. Roby, and members of the GRPS team. Um, there is a living document. What they mean by living document is it's continually updated around frequently asked questions about distance learning. If you go to grps.org. And then finally, if you have amazing things to say about Burton or not so amazing things to say, feel free to email communications at grps.org. Um, any feedback, uh, Mr. Woodside and myself love, whether it's positive or negative, to help improve everything we have going on here at Burton. Um, finally, question and answers. Obviously, this is a recorded video. Please add any questions or comments to our Facebook page. Um, our 
the Facebook page comment session or comment below right here on our YouTube channel. And we will, depending on the questions, either respond right there or create another video of the frequently asked questions that we can send out later. Um, I should have put this at the beginning, I apologize, but just make sure that you go ahead and comment those or message them. If you feel like it's a personal question, you can feel free to message uh, Ms. Woodside or myself. Um, I'm gonna stop sharing our screen here. Welcome back. Excellent. Well, thanks, Mr. Haga. That was a lot of information. Yeah. A lot of information. Woo, take a drink of water. Yes. Um, yeah, thank you so much, families, for tuning in. Again, this video will be on Facebook and on YouTube, so you can come back to it if you need to. If you have questions, feel free to reach out in the chat. Send, a, send us a message. Reach out on Dojo. We are here to help especially we know uh, we know this is kind of a crazy time. And so whatever we can do to help you guys, um, we are there. But thank you so much for tuning in and we can't wait to get this year started. Have a great night. Again, let us know if you need anything.